Hello, oh. I'm Christine, and I'm here with John. Let me do this again. Special guest, John. Go back. <laughs> sorting the Avengers. I'm really excited because I really love Harry Potter and sorting everyone. And John really loves Marvel. I like Marvel too. He knows a lot of stuff I about so. the characters because you've read the comics. Yeah. So we're going to be coming at this though from what we know from the movies. From the movies, yeah. yeah. Are you excited? Cool. Uh, yeah. And, <laughs> I'm nervous. John uh, has ever filmed a video like this before? No, definitely not. person we have coming up to our sorting hat is Loki. And I'm gonna say Slytherin. I said Slytherin too. If you were gonna put him in a second house, what would it be? He has moments of bravery, bravery? but you can never tell if it's if it's legitimate See, or not. Yeah. Watching him a second time, I really think he had a plan up his sleeve and he's not dead. Loki's so smart, he doesn't <laughs> usually do things like stab someone who he knows is gonna kill him. It was a little foolish for Loki, yeah. so there could be something he's, he's doing, but uh, at the same time, we heard like his neck snap. <laughs> In the moment, I did believe it the first mm. time. And then the second time, I was like, that's so unlucky for him to shout out something like, We will see Asgard shine again, brother! And then, like, wink at Thor. This one's, I think, pretty obvious. Obvious. Too. A Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Thor could have been Godric Gryffindor. Like, he could have started this. <laughs> Only the bravest in my house! That's something Thor would say. Vision. Oh, I didn't do Vision. Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. I think he's definitely Ravenclaw. Yeah, he I would really agree, actually. Things through. There's some Gryffindoriness in that he's yeah. worthy to wield the hammer. I think the thing that defines him as Ravenclaw is in Age of Ultron. He has that speech where he's like, Yeah. I'm not on your side. I'm not on Ultron's side. Definitely. I'm on the side of life. He has that very <laughs> wise old man feel to him, yeah. even though he's like two years old. Yeah. <laughs> I was born yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> what would you say for Ultron? Then. God, he like, is that Ravenclaw Slytherin line? I think it pushes to Slytherin. I would say Slytherin too, because Ravenclaw, they kind of push for knowledge and desire knowledge, and he already he kind yeah. of was born Knows with everything. it. You know, a really <laughs> tough one that I was thinking about is Thanos. So, oh, are we going to talk about Thanos? Let's talk about Thanos. I just watched the first Guardians of the Galaxy again, and mm -hmm. that Thanos is a different Thanos yeah. than the deep Thanos that we see in Infinity War. So yeah. let's do Infinity War Thanos. Totally, totally. Okay, because I think That's he's much more interesting. He almost is a Ravenclaw. I think he pushes the boundaries of Ravenclaw, but there are are evil Ravenclaws. This Thanos, at least, he feels for people. Yeah. Like, he's compassionate. He just believes that this is the only way to save the world. He thinks he's seeing the big picture. I had him as, and it took me a while to think yeah. about this one, because yeah. it's difficult. I said Gryffindor, but I, I like what you just said, and it's it's kind of moving me over to Ravenclaw. Okay. I think he also bided his time, and I think a Gryffindor would try mm. to act immediately, but he waited till the Good opportune point. moment. Uh, I like that. I thought this would be a, like a longer discussion. I like too that throughout the movie, he's not out to like kill the Avengers, to defeat the Avengers. Like he's, he yeah. actually tries to he's, avoid killing people yeah. as much as possible. He's like merciful. He doesn't want to kill people that he just sees removing half the universe as the only solution to keep it going. The only way. So, which is still psychotic and Yeah, and he's crazy messed up. And messed up. The whole thing about balance was very um, interesting. He doesn't want to rule the world. That's what it comes down to, and that's what a Slytherin would want as Endgame here, I think. Which I should say is, I mean, I don't know if we want to get into this, because we're just talking about the MCU version. Yeah, but, but in the comic book, he's The like comics, that. he's different. He's much more evil. He's trying to, like, literally court death, an actual character death that he's in love with, and he's trying to, like, prove his love to death by killing half the universe, and he's more Slytherin-y, and he desires power. I think that's what they started off portraying him as yeah. in the beginning. The next person I have is Tony. Tony's a complicated <laughs> button. Button? Mm. I honestly, though, after watching Infinity War, I've solidified on Ravenclaw. I think curiosity is what fuels him ultimately, not the need or want for more power. Yeah, I put him in Ravenclaw as well. Oh, good. Um, <laughs> I do think there's some Slytherin stuff in there. Yeah, there like, is. Like, he's very ambitious. That's, that's his next. It's like Ravenclaw and right underneath it would be Slytherin. Yeah, because he's always like, he's developing his new suit. He's always looking for the, like, the next thing to protect the earth. And yeah. so he's very ambitious in that way, but it's yeah. not for like, for power's sake, it's for, to defend the earth. Yeah, yeah. And to avenge it. Maybe he was once a Slytherin and then he's evolved oh, yeah. into a Ravenclaw. Oh yeah, I would say pre-Iron Man. Yeah, pre-Iron. He's, he's arced. He has Gryffindor too. Like, 
like yeah, like yeah, he's definitely sacrificing himself almost but, in the first Avengers. But he will always try to think things through and make a plan yeah. before acting. Like that was the difference. We had that one big scene with the Guardians and Iron Man. They're like, oh, we just kind of wing it, and he's like, no, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> he's, he's definitely he's evolved in that way too. Because like in the in the original Avengers, Thor shows up and takes Loki, and Cap's like, we need a plan of attack, and he's like, I have a plan, attack, and he just goes. So he's like very Gryffindor in that yeah. in that regard. But he yeah. he's, he kind of changes over time. Yeah, he has. What about Scarlet Witch? Because I, I actually, remember. after thinking about her, I put her down as a pup. This one's tough because she's featured in, in these movies, but like, I want to see more. I just put Gryffindor because I couldn't come up with anything. Well, I don't think she's Gryffindor. And the reason is because in Ultron, she needed a pep talk to come out. That's a good, good point. And that was very non-Gryffindor. It was a very puff thing. Because she wanted to fight, but she was just overwhelmed with fear, I think, in that moment. She um, kind of needed that too in, in Civil War, where she was staying home with Vision, but she didn't want to be there. She didn't want to be kept she, she also needed it, actually. Like, she also needed it in Infinity War to do what she needed to do. I think the Gryffindor would be brave enough to do it without hesitating as much as she did. Yeah. I think the loyalty she felt was really making it difficult for her to do anything. And she was supposed to stay with Vision while they were doing that stuff, you know, in mm -hmm. Wakanda. You know, she's too loyal to everyone out there. They needed her help, so she left. She needed to go. I feel like that's her ultimate. All right, you convinced me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'll say Hufflepuff then. I'll say Yay! Hufflepuff. I'm like a house lawyer. <laughs> so you've got Scarlet in your house. She's like so powerful. Yeah, she's one of the most powerful. She's, she's an awesome Hufflepuff. Oh yeah, because the other Hufflepuffs I had, they aren't crazy powerful. So I'm actually, I'm down to have Scarlet Witch because <laughs> we need some powerful Hufflepuffs. She's gonna be like the house mask. Yeah, totally. She's the Cedric Diggory. <laughs> I, I have her as Gryffindor. What do you have? Hufflepuff. Really? Yeah. Interesting. She does have Hufflepuff traits, but she does that stuff for Tony and is poised and controlled while she's doing it. She doesn't really hesitate. Well, I would say that's out of loyalty to Tony. There's a lot of moments where she considers leaving Tony and leaving yeah. the company, but she always sticks with him. Because she's very loyal. Yeah. I, I, there's a case for both, I feel like, mm -hmm. there. I'll give her to you. Okay. You can have it. <laughs> Slytherin. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> He's it's Gryffindor. Gryffindor. I actually, now that I'm thinking about the ultimate Gryffindor, I think that Thor still is, because Thor has that idiotic, goes for it without thinking thing, and I think Cap is a more reserved Gryffindor. He's like all the good traits of a Gryffindor. And Thor is like all the traits of a Gryffindor. Like the jock traits and like the show off the, traits. Those, yeah. Captain America is like, he's the ultimate. He's the poster boy. Yeah. Next one, I have this Bucky, who I feel like we don't really know. I feel like he's a pup, because he's so loyal to Cap. I think so too. But that's one of those where it's like he could go either way. Yeah, and it's we just don't have we don't enough. Know of, him enough. Yeah, I'll just say, uh, 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 take him, yeah, take him uh, into the house. <laughs> I think Hawkeye's a Ravenclaw. Oh. Oh wait, no, I thought he was a puff. Yes, I'm like Ravenclaw. What? <laughs> that the? came out wrong. <laughs> Ant-Man. Oh, I forgot Ant-Man, too. Slytherin or Gryffindor. Well, which Ant-Man are we talking about? Hank Pym and there's uh, Scott Lang. I'm talking about the one we see in the movie. We, we saw that. Paul Rudd. <laughs> we, we see a flashback. I'm talking Paul Rudd. We see Rudd. a flashback of, of Hank Pym. It counts. I'm talking Paul Rudd. Okay, Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd was in jail for doing a con. But it was, he was in jail for... But it was for my family. He was doing it, it wasn't just to like, to seal stuff. It was something about, I can't remember, some company was like, doing something crappy to its customers, so he released something something for free online. It was like something about like he's a whistleblower and they fired him so he's like screw you guys I'm gonna. Uh... It's an origin movie so it's hard to judge him at the beginning. I think by the end of it he's a Gryffindor. He takes that plunge into the microverse where yeah. he's in the, 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 quant microverse, okay. the quantum realm. I'll take him yeah. as Gryffindor because he was like brave to be a whistleblower. Yeah. Gamora! Gamora. I was in between Ravenclaw and Gryffindor. She has her moments where she's like just does stuff. She's the most Ravenclaw-y of the Guardians. Of the Guardians, yeah. But I didn't actually have any Ravenclaws on all the Guardians. So wow. I had her between Gryffindor Slytherin? and Slytherin. Though she's not doing anything for herself except no. wanting to be free. But she's, Thanos. I think she's cunning and. Yeah. And, it's um, like the green coloring swing. <laughs> <laughs> like she's no. just, she matches Slytherin. No, it was, it was more about, I think I was thinking specifically of that kind of growing up with Thanos always kind of it, going behind his back. I and, think it's and, kind of though like she's growing up in Slytherin house and she doesn't belong there and she doesn't know how to escape it. They're trying to insert this mindset of killing people and she's not okay with it. I think she is Gryffindor because in Guardians she takes a huge risk betraying Thanos and Nebula is definitely a Slytherin. Yeah, I say Slytherin for Nebula. What about what about Rocket? Rocket, I was putting between Ravenclaw and Slytherin, but he's definitely a Slytherin. Slytherin, He's yeah. definitely a Slytherin. Resourceful because Slytherins are resourceful too. 
They I, are. I know that because I looked it up on Google. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> And then we have Groot, Groot, who is a Hufflepuff. Hufflepuff. You have Groot on your team. <laughs> oh, Peter Quill, Star yeah. Lord, Gryffindor. Gryffindor. And then we have Doctor Strange, who yeah. is also a Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. Easy. He is so curious about everything ever. He's almost the ultimate Ravenclaw. Yeah. He's got a little more Slytherin in him. I mean, he's more... very ambitious. Like he wants to be yeah. the best. Yeah. So that's very Slytherin. But he evolves more into I know, very more Ravenclaw. Into Ravenclaw. Dr. Yeah. Strange and Tony are really interesting characters to compare because they're, they're really similar. They're, because they're so similar, they don't they get along. They clash. Yeah, they're so yeah. egotistical. Not, Not necessarily in a, terrible a bad, way. terrible way, yeah. but it's just like But in a way that they clash. clash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What's the Spider-Man? Spider-Man. Gryffindor. <laughs> Gryffindor. So I would almost say this. Toby is a Ravenclaw, but... Tom is a Gryffindor. <laughs> and that's, Tom is a little closer to the comic incarnation yeah. where Peter, no matter what, he's going to throw himself into the situation. He's going to protect the city, protect whatever he needs to protect, like, no matter what. Do some little joke, do some joke, guys, 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 guys. <laughs> you know what, we skipped Drax, who I think is a oh, Slytherin. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I don't even remember what I had. Well, just after just rewatching Guardians. He seems very borderline on morality stuff. Because at the end, he's like, what if I slit a man's throat? And they're like, that's murder. That's against the law. Rocket says something like, what if I want something that someone else has that's not mm -hmm. mine? And can I take it? And like, no, that's stealing. But I want it more than that. Mm -hmm. And in that way, they're very similar. I think they're both Slytherins that are good Slytherins. I mean, the one thing I'd say with Drax is that he's like, also impulsive. Yeah, he's impulsive. He yeah. throws himself into any situation. I think really like without thinking Slytherin. at all. I, th I don't know if I can decide on I that. think in general, he does go off and like kill people because <laughs> of his grief. Can Gryffindors kill people and still be Gryffindors? They can, they can kill people for brave That's a weird reasons. Question. He's vengeful, not brave in those situations. Okay. He like calls down Raul Ron Ronin. <laughs> Raul? <laughs> he calls down Ronin to the planet where yeah. everyone is and puts everyone's lives in danger. He's doing it just for his own selfish reasons. War machine? Oh. I just put him as a puff because he's really little to Tony too. as much as Tony breaks the laws and stuff. That's another one that's like, yeah, he's been in a lot of movies, but like, you don't really he's, he's always a supporting character. We don't get like a huge amount of detail into like his backstory and his personality. He lets all the Avengers come back, even though they're like, don't let them come back. He's loyal to his yeah. friends. Yeah. yeah, that's a great yeah. point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then I have Falcon. Wait, what'd you put? What'd you put? What did you put? I put... I put Hufflepuff. I put Gryffindor because he, without question, is just like coming to my house, guy. He doesn't even know them yet. He's not even loyalty. It's like he's like, yeah, we need to save the world. I, I think he leans toward Gryffindor just because of how open he is to all this. It would be different if they already knew each other, but they don't. There is the scene in, in Winter Soldier, which is like one of the best yeah. movies ever. Um, <laughs> Cap and Black Widow show up at his house and they're like, yeah. everyone's trying to kill us. And, and they like, just, he just lets him in. He just lets him in. I would say that's, that's a Hufflepuff. Oh, I would say that's Gryffindor. That's really brave. It's brave. He's like, guys, just throw me in. Get, put me in. Put, like, he's one of those put, <laughs> put me, me in, in coach. coach. <laughs> yeah, that's him. He's like, you know, I'm coming with you. All right, I'll say so. He's Gryffindor. also in the army. Like, he was in yeah. the special ops. Like, I yeah. feel like that's Gryffindor. Okay. I'll say Gryffindor. Yay! <laughs> We're getting down to it. I have so many. I you went, have so I many. I went way too detailed. Do it. Does anybody want to know who Arnim Zola belongs to? <laughs> who is that? <laughs> he's uh, the Red Skull's num number two dude. Who's he's the scientist? Well, you, you're lucky. I Winter know who Soldier. Red the Skull is. He shows up in Winter Soldier, and he's he's in the computer. Oh, the guy with the, the, really uh, the glasses. Yeah, yeah. He's a Ravenclaw. Would we you... don't need to talk about him. <laughs> We didn't talk about Hulk yet, who I... Ooh. Oh, wait, no, go on. Sorry. No, what do you want to say? <laughs> I, I split mine between Bruce and Hulk. I put different houses. Oh, wow, you got intense. Yeah. Hulk is like a Gryffindor, but I think that actually Bruce is a Ravenclaw. I mean, I think I put Hufflepuff. Wow, we have all the houses in him. The reason I think Bruce is a Ravenclaw is that he is really interested in learning oh, and yeah. information, and he's curious about different things. He tests all this stuff on himself. Yeah, that's, I think that's, that's very Ravenclaw. That's what got him into becoming the Hulk. So that's a good point. And uh, he gets along with Tony so well because they're both like really curious and want to learn more. I put Hufflepuff because post Hulk contamination, whatever you want to call it. He's still helping people. We see him at the the beginning of the Avengers. He's helping people. He's, he's curing sickness. He's doing what he can, even though he's still like on the run and being hunted down by the government. I it could go. That's a cool Ravenclaw Hufflepuff. We haven't had one yeah, of those kind yeah. of. I, I could say more Ravenclaw then. I think it's just a little more. It's it's really yeah. tough. As the whole thing, he's definitely like a Gryffindor, Gryffindor. Slytherin. He just bashes. Yeah. Stuff. You can't yeah. trust him. That's a good point. I think I put Gryffindor, but like Thanks. the Hulk is always he's angry. He's doing it for himself. Yeah. Like he he just wants to be the most powerful, powerful. and and. That's a good point. 
Oh, Shuri. Shuri's Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. Yeah. Easy. She's in my house. I love Shuri. <laughs> and Black Panther. Gryffindor. Gryffindor. <laughs> Gryffindor. Easy. Scarlet. Wait, we already did Scarlet. You mean Scarlet. I didn't Johansson. mean Scarlet. That's what I meant by Scarlet. <laughs> I was like, why do I have Scarlet down twice? <laughs> Black Widow. We talked about this yeah. earlier. I said at the time Gryffindor, but now I put Slytherin. Interesting. She starts off more Slytherin, especially in the first couple movies. But she's very deceptive, kind of in a, like a Loki way, like a good Loki. She never reveals everything that she's yeah. doing. She's fine going behind even her friend's backs if it means like accomplishing her mission. The goal. So. Yeah. I mean, I see that. She would have been put in Slytherin house if she was and sort of... She beginning. could have changed her major and transferred, and transferred, transferred to Hufflepuff. houses. Because, like, I think there's a strong Hufflepuff in her because she does befriend whoever needs a friend in the moment. And she does talk to them and, like, make them feel better. But that could be taken as a Slytherin trait if it's, like, to get to her means. She can chameleon... I was going to say chameleonize herself. Chameleonize. Like <laughs> she can that. be a social chameleon <laughs> in a way where she makes anyone around her comfortable enough to share what she needs to get the information. Because she's a spy. She's Slytherin. She's Jay, a good Slytherin. Can we ask J.K. Rowling if it's possible? Possible to change houses. Do they have counselors at Hogwarts? Can you go in and, and talk and about switch. changing houses? <laughs> I don't know. That's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. I'll add it to my J.K. Rowling if I ever get to interview her in a million years <laughs> list. Can you have like an existential crisis mid-school? Because you were there for seven years. Yeah. It's like, what if like year five, you're like, I really kind of want to be evil. Like I, <laughs> Or like, I really kind of think I identify more with the Ravenclaw or something. I'm sure there's the occasional case yeah. where you feel like you don't belong. Yeah. <laughs> Michonne, what's her name in the movies? Like oh, they don't Akoya? say it enough. Akoye. I think she's either a puff or a Gryffindor. I just put Gryffindor. Yeah, she's really brave. And then we have Mantis. Mantis. Who I think is a puff. A puff. Like she was <laughs> working Mantis. for Ego for so long, even though she didn't want to, because yeah. she's like really loyal. <laughs> she's loyal and that's she also really know any yeah, better. that's all she kind of knew. But then yeah. she met the Guardians. So she's like, oh wow, like. The, the... Oh, I am ugly and I am a pet. <laughs> I'm super happy to have Mantis on I my team. I love her, yeah. <laughs> Wong. Okay, Wong. I was in between Slytherin and Puff. Oh. I think he's a Puff, though. Ravenclaw. But he's so loyal, he doesn't go to the fight. In Infinity War? Oh, I guess he does have all those books. Yeah, I was going to say, if he got nominated to the new librarian position, he must be very... Studious. Yeah, oh. and he's very protective of his books. He is very protective of the books. Okay. Or is he loyal to the books? <laughs> <laughs> the books are my friends. Who's left that we haven't gone through on your list? Okay, oh my god. Happy Hogan. Ooh, Puff. Puff? Yeah, Puff. I've said Gryffindor. I, Gryffindor because like he has no powers, but he still goes in and tries to fight yeah. sometimes. But I think because he's so loyal he's, and he's so He's nice. so loyal. He's always yeah. with Tony. Obadiah Stain. Slytherin. Slytherin. Heimdall. Ooh, Ravenclaw. Ravenclaw. Mm -hmm. I like he that. He sees everything. Like he wants that. to know everything. I put Gryffindor, but we can say Ravenclaw. I think he's a Ravenclaw when it comes down to it because he's like so knowledgeable and he always wants to know about everything. Yeah, that's like his whole thing is just knowing where all everyone knowing, is and yeah. seeing all souls. and Okay. <laughs> Eric Selvig. The scientist in the first Thor, in the second Thor, and in the uh, Avengers, he's with Jane Foster. Yeah, I just put I Ravenclaw. Know. Okay. Jane Foster. Ravenclaw? Raven yeah, Ravenclaw. Valkyrie? Her name isn't Valkyrie. I don't think she has. She doesn't say her name. Are you kidding? Yeah. The main character who's also in Westworld we're talking about? Yeah. She doesn't have a name? <laughs> Not in the movie. Valkyrie is just like what she is. She's just Valkyrie. That's just like... But I think she's the only... Tony Playboy she's the only known... Philanthropist. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's, but philanthropist. She's, she's the last known Valkyrie, I think. She's a Slytherin. Slytherin, I like a that. good Slytherin. I think I think I put that too. No, I put question mark because I didn't know. But let's I say think Slytherin. she's a good Slytherin. Hella Slytherin, like all villains. Oh are yeah, definitely. I was like, who's yeah. Hella? <laughs> Korg. How can we not do Korg? <gasps> Korg, hey, Puff. Man. He's such a Puff. <laughs> he's, he's a Hufflepuff. I'm he's so happy to have Korg too. I love Korg. He'll help anybody. He he helps Thor when he meets Thor. He meets Loki. And he's like, hey man. <laughs> I'm gonna go on that ship. Grandmaster, Slytherin. The Collector, I think, is also Slytherin. The Collector? I the Collector. Yeah, he's totally Slytherin. Yeah. Red Skull, Slytherin. <laughs> Although, oh, I wanted to mention this, though. Infinity War spoilers. We do see kind of, it's not really growth, but like a change in his character. Like, this is the coolest thing ever in Infinity War. <laughs> Red Skull shows up in Infinity War, and he's he's not the same. Yeah. He's been punished to guard this stone that he it's desires kind of like but never can get. He's been banished to one of the higher levels of hell. So, like, he almost didn't seem Slytherin. He seemed like nothing at the end. He was almost like this ghost of his past. It was cool. I think he's still Slytherin. Okay. I mean, he is like. He's too bad. I mean, yeah, I mean, in, in the first one, for sure, he's like. Terrible. Horrible. Zemo, Slytherin. Nick Fury. That's a big oh, one. Oh, Nick! Ravenclaw or Slytherin. I think he's Ravenclaw. He's Ravenclaw. I put Slytherin. I think he walks the line. He's always planning stuff, but he's also. Is he scheming and stuff? He's always scheming. He okay. always has got like a. Slytherin. Yeah. Maria Hill. Who's that? You like her in that other show. Oh, Robert Chabotsky! Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love Robin! Oh, she's a Gryffindor. Gryffindor? She's the Gryffindorist. I said Slytherin. Oh, God. 
bad. She's a human. She's just always just right there. <laughs> she's right there. Anything happens, she's like, yeah. <laughs> okay. General Ross Slytherin. Don't know him. Galaga guy. This is important. Galaga guy? Galaga guy. What the f Who the hell is Galaga, Galaga guy? guy? We need to talk about Galaga guy. Can you give me some yeah. more context? Galaga guy is in the first Avengers movie. He was on the helicarrier. And he was secretly playing Galaga and Tony Stark pointed him out. <laughs> We, we need You've to talk, gotta we need be to, kidding me. We need me. to talk about Galaga guy. What did you sort him He is a Slytherin. He's cunning. He's resourceful. How do you how do you install Galaga? I honestly think how, he's a hustle. How do you how do you install Galaga on a computer on a helicarrier without anybody knowing? He's playing Galaga without anybody knowing except Tony Stark realizing. He's very cunning. How did he do that? I don't know, John. How did you think to put him on? <laughs> he's important. Next. Okay. Oh, cameo man. Are you kidding? <laughs> Stan Lee! Oh. Stan Lee, cameo man! He is, you can't, you, he's different characters. He's a, I know, so he's everything. Ronan, Slytherin. Oh yeah. Ego, Slytherin. Yeah. Mordo, I would say Gryffindor. Who's Mordo? He's the, uh, the hero turned villain in Doctor Strange. Uh, Slytherin. Did so, you say Gryffindor? Yes. No! Yes. Why? Because he believes in his he's cause? In, he's in, yes. It's because he wants to be powerful. I just, I wanted to give a villain a non-Slytherin. <laughs> he's a Gryffindor. You're really grasping his shirt. <laughs> yeah. He's the one, but he's I the one he's where Slytherin he, he really starts. Because allowed him really to slip into this darkness because he's so ambitious and he wants more power. I, well, I think he slipped into darkness because he felt betrayed by by the ancient. Yeah, one. but people can feel betrayed and not slip that dark. Yeah, can we say both? Because <laughs> I want a villain in, in a nun. I, I mean, there could be a villain that's Gryffindor. Ancient one, Ravenclaw. Dormammu. Gryffindor. <laughs> he's nothing. He's beyond time. He's beyond houses. Beyond houses. He put the sorting hat on. I'm like, oh, sorry, you're beyond. <laughs> <laughs> the sorting hat just explodes. <laughs> Killmonger. Ah, this see, is... Killmonger could walk the line of Slytherin Gryffindor. This is one where I wanted. I think to... he thinks he's a Gryffindor. Yeah, totally. He, he totally this does. Is, that's one where I like where yeah, he yeah. thinks he's a Gryffindor, but he is a Slytherin. I would be okay with putting him in Gryffindor to get a villain in Gryffindor because he okay. does think he's being brave. What's great and what makes this so difficult about Killmonger is that his, he's a great character. His motives, what he's fighting for, isn't necessarily it, wrong yeah, it's, it's like the it's, it's stuff that you can yeah it's stuff it. that yeah. you can agree with it's stuff yeah. that you understand is the it's, means to the end we're just gonna fall on gryffindor because he's the closest villain sure. to gryffindor i do hate that like there's no gryffindor gone bad come on that'd be fun in a, in a, this in a is harry just potter like, bad, a, a, gr a bad a gr gryffindor. gryffindor gone bad yeah i'd really like to see that you know what would happen is that they'd make one shitty decision because they just go for it because they just oh, like I think like they're that. right i like that um and then they kind of spiral from there. Can you see a, a bad Hufflepuff where he's just very impolite? I think that's those are those are our houses <laughs> across the board. I think each each house has a good amount. Yeah, they all have yeah. a decent amount. What about kid from the first Captain America? He's held hostage by the guy who kills the guy. He's running away and he throws the kid in the water. And the kid's like, "Don't worry, I can swim." <laughs> Gryffindor. Gryffindor. Well, this has been the sorting of all of the Avengers and random extras that John brought in. I hope you had fun. I had fun. How did it go for you, your first video? Uh, was hopefully good. We'll yeah, see. Yeah, I think we it went go. really well. I think you did a really nice job. Hopefully. Good job, Pond. Oh, Let us know if you disagree or if there's like a borderline one. Who do you think, where do you think they fell? I'm Christine. I'm John. I'll see you next time. I make videos every Tuesday. All my links are in the description below. Goodbye!